So in this lab, we are going to look at how different vendors have different configuration syntax for VLANs. And we shall look at Cisco, we shall look at uh, Juniper router, or uh, you can think of it as a layer 3 switch, and a Linux server. So we have starting here with two Cisco switches, um, SW1 and SW2. Each switch has an orange and a green VLAN configured connected to it and these are configured as access ports orange is vlan 20 green is vlan 30. the ip addresses for subnet ranges for each is given at the bottom below each node each access node has its ip address listed beneath it and it's given by 100.64. the vlan number dot the pc number so pc1 has that ip address for example there is also a Linux server at the center here, which has IP address 100.64.20.100 inside the orange VLAN 20 and 100.64.30.100 inside the green VLAN 30. And we shall get to how that works later on. Let's console into the Cisco switch and see what um, we have configured. If you look at these different ports, this one here is, as you can see, gigabit zero stroke zero. This one here is gigabit two stroke one. This one here is gigabit three stroke one, right? So this particular port is gigabit three stroke one. So let us look at those different interfaces to see what's configured there. So show run int gigabit zero stroke zero and this shows you that we've created uh, something in the mode is trunk and inside trunk mode the allowed VLANs are just these two 20 and 30 and we've specified that we are using 802.1q encapsulation if we look at um, the other one was two stroke one this is an access this this port is in mode access the VLAN when it's in access mode is VLAN 20 and if we look at 3 stroke 1 this is also in access mode and the VLAN when it's in access mode is VLAN 30. If you want to verify what that looks like, um, how the configuration looks like on the command line, um, there are multiple show VLAN commands but we shall look at just a couple. So if we do show VLAN brief, get a summary of the VLANs that exist on the switch. And you can see we have VLAN 20 there and we have VLAN 30. And you can see which interfaces VLANs 20 and VLAN 30 are configured on. Note that the default VLAN has other ports that have not been configured one way or another. And there are also some other VLANs that exist that we haven't created, but um, Cisco um, traditionally created these. Note also that gigabit zero stroke zero isn't listed under VLANs 20 or VLANs 30. To see that, you need to look at the output of, um, because it's a trunk port, you need to look at the output of a particular VLAN ID. So show VLAN ID, in this case 20, and then you shall see that gigabit zero stroke zero is listed down there. So this is how you configure it in Cisco and this is how you verify the configuration. Now this two devices here inside the blue circle collectively form a Juniper MX router. The architecture of Juniper has separate control and forwarding planes. Your forwarding plane is this one at the bottom, the VFP, and this is where you have line cards and different interface slots. And the control plane is where you run routing protocols and this is what you connect to to issue your configuration and the commands to verify what is happening on your router. This has a dedicated link between the control plane and the forwarding plane, so internally they exchange some information. Other external devices are co connected to ports inside the control plane, and in this case, these three devices 
uh, these three links are connected into trunk ports so that you can trunk from the Cisco switches as well as to the Ubuntu server. So let us console as we said to the control plane and see what that looks like. So we can look at the configuration by saying show configuration interfaces. And we see from a beginning that we have three gigabit ethernet interfaces, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 2. And in each one of them, under the bridge family, we've said the interface mode is trunk and the VLAN ID list is 20 and 30. And we've done that for each one of them. So this is how you specify that these are trunk ports. Additionally, for Juniper, you have to create what are called, inside the configuration, what are called bridge domains, and you tell it what to do with these different VLANs. So if we say show, I want to look at the configuration for bridge domains. Um, you can see that we've created one called VLAN 20 with an ID of 20, and we've collected, created one called VLAN 30, which will match anything which has the VLAN ID 30 on it. To verify this and to see what it's doing, you issue the show bridge domain command. And you can see that we're using the same routing instance, default switch, because this, remember we say this is a layer three, you can think of it as a layer three switch. But we have VLAN 20 with that particular VLAN ID and it lists all the interfaces that participate inside that VLAN. Same thing for VLAN 30. And if you notice, interfaces are listed twice. So that would tell you that these are trunk ports. But of course, inside this particular output, you do not see the words access and trunk that you had here. The last interface we created was 002. Let us create two more interfaces, 003 um, inside VLAN 20 as an access and 004 inside VLAN 20 VLAN 30 as um, an access as well. So the way we do that is we say configure and then we say set interfaces gigabit ethernet and we want to start with 0, 0, 003 and under the first unit family bridge we want to say the interface mode is access and we want to say that the VLAN ID now you can have either VLAN ID list or VLAN ID but in this case for access mode since we only have one VLAN you just say I want this to be VLAN 20 and then we can do the same for the next interface which is available which is um, GE4 and we say this would be VLAN 30. So we can say show and we want to ask it to compare so that it shows us the lines that we've just added. Um, we typed each one of these statements on one line but it broke it out into this um, syntax. So for gigabit 3 we've said family bridge interface mode is access the ID is 20 for gigabit 4 family bridge Interface mode is access, the ID is 30. So we can commit this um, configuration and we can get out of uh, configuration mode back into exec mode. And if we again now look at our bridge domain, you will see that down here at the bottom, gigabit 3 stroke 0 has been added to VLAN 20, and down here at the bottom, gigabit 4 stroke 0 has been added to VLAN 30. So now let us look at this Linux machine and we shall log in. And the first thing that we are going to look at as as soon as you log in you can notice that there's an IP address for an interface VLAN 20 and that is the IP address and an IP address for VLAN 30 is that these names could have been anything they do not tell you exactly what VLAN it is but it's good to have them to match the VLANs that you want 
So this configuration, um, because it's Ubuntu 18.04, uses NetPlan. So the file that you use to configure this is, is inside slash etc NetPlan. And um, if I scroll to the top, you have a network statement, then you have an Ethernet statement that lists the physical Ethernet um, on this machine. And in this case, we have ENS3 and um, we've just set it not to have IP addresses on, DH on version 4 or version 6. Then for the VLAN configuration, you have any name. The ID has to, you specify the tag, which is 20. And under link, you specify the interface that it's linked to. And then you can do things like specify the IP address. So this is how we do it. Other Linux systems might have different configuration files, but if you um, look at um, VLAN slash config, you will end up with this same kind of thing. You'll have a name, the ID um, right there, as well as the interface that it's connected to. Also, you can do things like um, IP address list VLAN 20, and it will tell you a couple of things like the IP address itself. It will tell you that this is the scope and it will tell you that it's an interface that is linked to ENS3. So this will work um, um, irrespective of which Linux system that you are using as long as it has some way of configuring VLANs. So because it has addresses in both these networks, I can say, for example, ping 100.64.20.1, which is PC1. And I can also ping, let us see, let's give it a five count to 100.64.30.12, um, which is down here inside VLAN um, 30. And that kind of works. However, because we don't have gateways on this network, if I'm on PC1, I can ping 100.64.20.100, and this will work fine because it's inside the same subnet as me. But however, I cannot ping 100.64.30.100 because it does not know how to reach that device from the server or from the PC. Um, if I connect to a different PC, uh, a different set of PCs, for example, PC 12, I can ping 100.64.30.100. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move these cables for these PCs into the access ports that we created earlier. So. First, we need to delete this link. We also need to delete this link. But all I want to do is delete this link. What I deleted was this, which doesn't really matter. This just tells us, um, this is just documentation to tell us which VLAN is which. So I've removed the link from PC12 and I've removed the link from PC1 and we can now add the link from PC1 Ethernet 0 to the next available interface on the VFP and then as well as PC12 from Ethernet 0 to the next available interface on the VFP which we already configured. Note that the names inside here do not match the names that the control plane sees. But once that is done, we should be able to ping 20.100 again because we've moved, it's, it's still inside an access port inside VLAN 20. And down here, it's still an access port inside VLAN 30. So this still works. And if whilst pinging, I run Wireshark on this interface, Wireshark allows us to capture packets as they go through the different interfaces. And let's say I'm only interested in ICMP packets. 
and um, if I'm pinging from PC1 to 100 and I'm pinging from PC12 to 100, what you see on that link between the MX router, because this is where we're running Wireshark, so that on this link between here and down here, if we go back to the Wireshark, is you see different packets. Uh, from 20.1, you'll have a packet and you can see that it has an 802.1Q tag ID of 20. It has an Ethernet source and destination MAC address, which we could check, but it should match the MAC addresses of 20.1 and uh, uh, 20.100. And then this is the details of the tag. Priority, the flag for token ring, which we don't use, and the ID. For something that is in VLAN 30, um, you can clearly see that the ID changes to 30, both on the incoming packet as well as the response. As a summary, these different vendors have different ways to specify VLAN configuration. And however, they all internally will use 802.1Q to tag packets wherever they need to on trunk ports. And then on access ports, they will all send untagged packets so it is interoperable. Now, note that spanning VLANs needs to be done carefully. If you look at VLAN 20 now exists here, it exists here, it exists on this switch. So you need to be careful with how you span VLANs because any port that participates inside, any device that participates inside VLAN 20 is affected by any thing that happens inside that VLAN. For example, if we had a broadcast storm on this VLAN, it will affect these access ports. It will affect this trunk port, which in turn will affect all these access ports because they'll share, much as they're in a different VLAN, they'll share the physical cable, this one. It will affect that port. It will affect all these ports. And once you affect these ports, you affect both this VLAN up here and this VLAN down here. So be very, very careful about spanning VLANs.